Hi, I'm Dr. Michelle Lee, a board certified ophthalmologist. And today I'm going to talk about my favorite topic, cornea transplants. I am a fellowship trained cornea transplant surgeon, meaning that I have an extra year of training on top of general ophthalmology training, where I learned and performed cornea transplant surgeries. And I have been performing cornea transplants as part of my practice for around five years. Before we talk about cornea transplants, we need to talk more about the cornea. The cornea is the clear window in front of the eye. This part of the eye is responsible for serving as a barrier against bacteria, foreign bodies, and UV light, and also refracts light, meaning it helps bend light so that light rays focus on the retina. The cornea is responsible for about 70% of the eye's optical power, and for this reason is reshaped by procedures like LASIK and PRK to fine tune focus. The cornea also has many nerve endings and is the most highly innervated part of the body. These nerve endings are responsible for the tearing reflex, blink reflex, and promotion of growth factors which help with cornea and eye healing. The cornea also has something called immune privilege, where there are no blood vessels and therefore no immune cells trying to attack this layer of the eye. This makes it great for transplantation. The cornea has five layers, and I like to think of the cornea like a rainbow. The top layer of the cornea is the epithelium and is the skin of the cornea. The bottom layer is called the endothelium and is made up of a single layer of thousands of pumps that pump water out of the cornea to maintain clarity. When the cornea is diseased or violated, the beauty of the cornea is that we can eventually perform a surgery to replace the diseased portion of the cornea. There are different types of cornea transplants, so if the disease process affects the majority of the cornea, we typically remove the entire thickness of the cornea and replace the cornea with a full cornea from a donor. This tissue has to be sewn in with tiny stitches that are about one-tenth the thickness of a human hair. If there is just disease of the back part of the cornea, we can just replace that back layer of the eye with surgeries called DMEC or DSEC depending on the thickness of tissue. When there is an infection of the cornea, otherwise known as a corneal ulcer, or trauma to the cornea, the resultant scar can permanently affect the vision. A scar or a melt from a cornea infection or trauma are common reasons why I will do a cornea transplant, and this will usually require a full thickness transplant. Ideally, we wait until the infection is completely gone, but sometimes when the eye is open due to an aggressive infection, we have no choice but to do a transplant and hope that the infection does not transmit onto the new graft. Another common reason for a cornea transplant is to treat a genetic condition called Fuchs endothelial corneal dystrophy. This is a common condition where the bottom layer of the cornea rainbow, or the endothelium, has defective pumps that degrade quickly. With this condition, we lack the pumps that pump water out of the eye, fluid builds up in the cornea and causes swelling, which in turn results in blurry vision. With this condition, we can typically remove and replace the bottom layer of the cornea with a partial thickness cornea transplant called a DMEC, which just replaces the single membrane and disease layer of endothelial cells. This surgery works very well most of the time and can result in a complete visual recovery. Keratoconus, which is gradual steepening of the cornea from a sphere to a cone, used to be the most common reason why we perform a cornea transplant, but with the advent of cornea cross-linking and the improvement of devices like scleral lenses, cornea transplants for keratoconus are becoming obsolete. But sometimes we do see advanced cases of keratoconus where the eye is damaged and scarred to the point where the only treatment that might offer benefit is a total replacement. For this condition, we typically perform a full thickness transplant with excellent results. Cornea transplantation is a big surgery with high risks of complication, permanent damage to the eye, and usually a lifelong need for eye drops. 
There is also a risk of graft failure where the cornea graft is damaged either during processing, transportation, surgery, or even during the recovery period and never clears properly, as well as a lifelong risk of graft rejection where the cornea is perceived as a foreign body and attacked, causing graft failure and loss of the graft. While this surgery can be a miracle, even as cornea surgeons, we do our best to pursue medical treatments for most eye diseases if possible. Cornea grafts come from donors who have passed away and either have self-designated themselves as organ donors or have family members who agree to organ donation, and these are extremely precious. While in the United States alone, we perform over 50,000 cornea transplants a year, and use many more for training and research, there is a deficit of tissue worldwide and a critical need for more donors and tissue. I hope this video was illuminating and thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you at my next video. Bye!